everybody welcome back to my channel my name is Laura or Laura X Stitches and we're here for the December update we're getting towards the end of 2018 it's currently what date is it the 27th you know that bit in between Christmas and New Year's when you just don't know what's going on that's where I am <laughs> the only reason I kind of know what date is is because Matt's working so I can kind of see where he's going but I'm not very good at that so welcome back I hope your Christmas was fantastic and your December in general was fantastic um, to start off with here's my shirt this is a Hufflepuff shirt. I love it. it because whenever I find Hufflepuff things, because that's what house I'm in, um, it's always bright yellow. So it was nice to find one that was black and yellow instead. That's exciting. What do I have to talk about? Well, I've got stuff all over my kitchen table right now, which is very exciting. And as always, because I'm in the kitchen, the dogs might come around and there might be some barking. They've been pretty bad lately because next door had someone stay over with a dog. So they're kind of like sniffing out that area. I think the dog's gone. I don't know. But you can probably hear it. But Sky's barking right now. So I may have to stop every now and again. But that's okay. Um, like I said, I've got lots of stuff around um, on my table. Which means that there might be some like little breaks in the video where I'm packing things up. So I don't have to do heaps at the end. But I'll let you know. Um, before I go any further... Where is the thing I want to talk about first? That's right. I just have a question because at some point last year, I finished Ophelia's Pearl by Nora Corbett. It's hanging up in my hallway. I think I made some kind of agreement with someone to swap um, when they'd finished a mermaid. And I, I want to do that still, if that's a thing. But if I haven't, I'd like to give this away. So if that was you and you remember, because I can't, can you please let me know um, just in a comment or on Instagram or something or on Facebook? I feel like we talked on Facebook. I can't remember. I'm really sorry. Um, let me know so I can sort that out. So done. Let's really quickly talk Christmas or end of school and Christmas. Um, end of school was insane, um, as it always is. It was very busy. Um it was very emotional too because a few staff members were leaving from school, including my teaching partner, and I had to say goodbye to her in front of the staff, like to do a little speech thingy and give her a present, and I couldn't get four words out before sobbing. So <laughs> um, it was emotional, but that's life, isn't it? People come and go. So um, yeah, it was emotional, but I'm really excited for next year. Lots of new things are happening. Um and new roles and stuff so I'll be doing a bit more than I usually do so that'll be interesting um Christmas was great we spent um lunch with Matt's family and dinner with mine that's how it usually goes because my family's Christmas it used to be really big but because all the like cousins on my side have grown up we're all older um it's not as big anymore so we kind of um we get together later on in December or January so I had a really nice time with Matt's family as I always do and then we went and spent some time with my family in the evening. Um, my brother is coming, has is actually here at my parents' house. Um, he came down from a different state with his family. So it's really exciting to see him. I haven't seen him in about like three years. Um, just because it's hard to get there and it's hard for them to come down with a small family and stuff. So I'm really excited to see them tonight. Um, I think that's everything. Yeah, but Christmas is really good and New Year's is going to be great. We're going away for a little holiday. So I'm very excited. Now, this video is going to be in a few parts. I'm going to talk a normal update, um, not including plans. Oh, have I put in plans? No, I'm going to put plans separately. I'm not sure how long this is going to be. If I get to the end of my normal update and I don't think it's too massively long, I'm going to tap, tap on, tag on, add, I don't know some um, wrap up stuff and some plans for next year. If, if I think it's too long, I'll stop it and do a completely separate video, but I am going to film it all at the same time. So it will look exactly the same, <laughs> um, but I will get going with the um, normal floss tube update. That dog needs to come inside though. What a mess. Okay. The dogs are both inside. I'm really hoping that they chill out and calm down. But they have been sleeping this morning, so who knows. Oh, by the way, it's quarter past. That's the dog drinking. I'm very sorry. 
Um, it's a quarter past nine in the morning. Um, and let me just check something. The temperature is currently 26 degrees. Sorry, 29 degrees. I don't know what that is in Fahrenheit. Um, and it's going to be 41 degrees, which I think is like 109 or 108 or something. Um, and it, yeah, so it's 29 and it's only quarter past nine in the morning. So I've got the air conditioner on. Um, so it is a bit loud, but I can't, I can't live in Australia without air conditioning. So Sky's come to say hello. I can't lift her up though. I do apologize. Okay. Let's talk whips. Let's actually get this video going. Oh, are you talkative? Off you go. <laughs> now, um, because of school and Christmas and December being the month that it is, my stitching has been all over the place. Um, I've completely changed the way I'm doing everything, like really overhauled all my thoughts about stitching. I was actually contemplating not doing floss tube anymore. Random, isn't it? Um, I just, it was becoming a bit of a chore and a bit of a job and that's not what a hobby should be. So I was thinking about not doing it or doing it less frequently or something. Um, but with this new kind of kick of how I'm doing my stitching, I wanted to come and share that with you. Um, yeah, because... I do like doing floss tube. It's just a big process. Um, so hopefully um, with this new way of stitching, it won't be as long and a few other things that are happening. So I did work on Pokemon and I'll put in a picture of what that will look like when it's finished and also what it looked like in my last update video. Um, I did work on it, not as much as you would think I would after what I talked about in my last video. So I worked on... Um, Page 13, I think it is. And it's a free pattern, which is why that the pattern is just sitting there. I don't actually remember where I was last time if I'd finished the page or not. But that's page 13 that's done. This is on 18 count eater. Uh, two strands. And the needle minders, this one here is from Needle Minder Obsession on Etsy. And the Pikachu is from Once Upon a Needle Minder on Facebook. So yeah. That's my pick Pokemon. Um, I'll talk about um, why that didn't get as much done on it in the plan section or whenever I talk about that. Um, next one, I just need to move some things around, is the Lakeside Needlecraft Medieval Castle cell, which is being run by Lakeside and designed by Tiny Modernist. Um, I can't really show you a picture of what it will look like when it's finished because it's a mystery sale. But I might try and find the picture of either the, just the border or where it's up to at the moment. And also where it was last time. I'm sitting this on a piece of 32 count Murano in Forbidden Forest. Forbidden Forest? Frost, something to do with the forest. Why can't I remember? No, it's not at all. Nothing to do with the forest. Welcome to the jungle. There you go. And here i'm sure i put in a picture of where i was last time here we are now and that green's pretty true to life so obviously i'm not caught up <laughs> i stitched the border until um my needle there yeah, it is um i stitched the border until i had room one or week or is it, it's not really weeks um like part two went here because part one was the border and part two is here and it has a little dragon as well up in the sky um so i had that all ready to go and then i just didn't stitch it anymore <laughs> i do really love it so it is a whip that i will keep continue to work on but it just hasn't really happened yet this needle miner is also from um needle miner obsession on etsy and this fabric i'm stitching on is two over two so yeah, it will come back out. It's not a one that I'm never going to do again. It just didn't happen this month. Wasn't really feeling that project. Okie dokie. The next thing I worked on, I think after I did that, I had a bit of a break from stitching. I think, um, I think I got to the point where I was like, oh, I have to do this and I have to do this. I'm going to let myself do this and stuff like that. And it was just annoying. Um, I'd rather just kind of like what I'm doing instead of making myself do stuff. But I got to the point 
where um, the Stiochalong had finished. And that is um, something that's run by Stioch on Facebook. Um, I've talked about it lots before. It's a true mystery sale. So we didn't know anything about what we were stitching. There was no theme. Um, the way the pattern was released was that you couldn't actually tell what it was until right at the end. Um, and the last part was to make it up yourself. Um, so here's a picture of where I was last time. And I decided to pick this up and just get it done because I, I was on a team and it's like part of the competition for the teams is to get it all finished by the end of December. So I wanted to make sure it was done. And I'm stitching this, I stitched this, sorry, on a piece of 36 count linen um, that I hand dyed myself. And this is my finish. So as you probably know, in this household, <laughs> we play D&D. &D. Dungeons and Dragons, so I did something about dice. Um, if I was to do this again, I would have this down one or two rows, but I'm not restitching that. <laughs> okay, as I was saying, these videos take so much longer to film when I'm out here because of the dogs. A delivery truck's rocked up for someone else and they've gone off their nut. I don't know what they're doing. But as I was saying, this was stitched in all silks for you silks. They were from Fabric of the, Mo uh, Fabric of the Month, Silk Silks of the Month Club. Um, so if you'd like to know which ones they are, just have a look at my previous or one before that video. And that is it all finished. It says, home is where the dice roll. And I found a little pattern online for these, but I modified it. Because when I was stitching them, they looked really fat. So I just made them a little bit longer. And it has a 1 and a 20. If you don't know about D&D... &D, there's a 20 sided dice and a d20 roll which looks like that when it lands on a 20 is the best roll you can get and one that you always aim for and a one's the worst <laughs> so i'm really happy that's done the, i will eventually frame it it's not a priority but it's currently on one of our bookshelves kind of hanging there um, but it will be framed and put into the bookshelf with the other dnd stuff i'm assuming um matt's not a fan of this one <laughs> because he doesn't like oh my screensaver just went on not because he doesn't like the um quote it's that he thinks that the colors clash and that's fine he can think that all he wants but i really like it <laughs> he is one of those people that like um like a neutral fabric um so this is not neutral <laughs> um after this stitch along i decided to have a start um I had three to choose from and I got some help from my sister and Adele to choose which one to do. And I ended up choosing a Mill Hill kit um, because of the season, I suppose. And it is the Scotty or Scotty Dog. And it's in the Winter Holiday Collection. Um, that's what that little guy looks like. And I did actually finish it pretty soon after I started. <laughs> I... Um, this is my first Mill Hill kit I've ever done. So it was a really exciting experience to stitch on perforated paper for the first time, to bead for the first time in a really long time. I, I did do beading last year with a couple finishes, but I haven't since then. So it was really nice to do some beading um, and attach a little charm. I've never done that before either. So it was really cool. That's what he looks like a bit closer up. There is a fair bit of leftovers. Um, and I'm going to pass that along to someone. It's very cute. I really like his little cloak. So yeah, really happy to have that done. Um, it was a really cute and small stitch and exactly what I needed. And this kind of formed my plans for next year. Um, so that was a finish. Then I, either during it or... During that one, or just after, I decided to stitch a present for the um, my teaching partner who left. Um, she was a huge, um, hugely important person in shaping my teaching this year and giving me confidence and helping me grow and learn more and question. Hugely important person in my life and will be forever. So I decided to get her, uh, make her something because she really values handcrafted things and appreciates the time um so she's one of those people that i knew i could sit something for so i had very um generously received a present from a stitching friend for etsy a gift card and part of what i purchased with that was this pattern and i'll pop it up on the screen it's a periodic table um that spells teacher 
And I decided to start this on the Monday or Tuesday and I had to have it ready to go and framed and stuff by the Friday. So I um, ended up just doing teach um, and I'll put in a picture of that finish because she obviously has it now. Um, the reason I chose this one is because this year we taught chemistry together and um, in primary school, which is really cool. And we really enjoyed teaching that and we learned lots about stuff ourselves and we were able to teach the kids a lot of stuff about um, chemistry and we both made a periodic table in our classroom. So um, I thought it was perfect <laughs> and she really, really valued it. Um, she was very happy with it. So this is a fabric I dyed myself and the um, threads, there was a silken color blue, which was the borders. The um, symbols were in a silks for you and the rest of it, like the writing of it was in a DMC color. And I'm really happy with how it turned out and she was really excited. So it was really cool. After that, I had been neglecting a certain piece um, just because it wasn't like really calling to me, but I knew that I could get a finish on it. So I decided to focus on my legendary creature cell by um, Clouds Factory. And I'll pop in a picture here of what it looked like last time. This was their mystery cell for this year. And I'm stitching, the, I stitched this on a piece of 16 count Ada in Nocturne. And that was the called for fabric. And I did actually finish it. And I think it looks really cool. That fabric's perfect coloring on my screen. So the last pattern was the Y and Z at the bottom. And I'll zoom in in a minute, but that's the full thing completely finished. I think it looks fantastic. Um, I'll go to this bit now. So we had Yumbo or Jumbo, Yumbo, and Zamai, or Zami. I'm not sure how to say that one. That's a three-headed dragon. I thought that was pretty cool. Um, I did this one second, so the last one I stitched, and he did take a while, because <laughs> there's lots of bits and pieces, but I really enjoyed that one, and she was really quick. She took me a, less than a day, a couple of hours. Um, in terms of this pattern, if you're going to do it... Um, like this uh, next year or at some point, and you're going to do it exactly as charted as I have, I would recommend getting another skein, getting two skeins of the Week Star Works in Moss. It is used in the majority of the patterns. I did use two, I used completely one skein and I started another one. There may have been some others that I started um, the second skein of, because I did buy, I got to a few months ago and I was talking with Adele who's also doing this and we were kind of like, oh, we're going to run out of moss. And so I decided to buy another one of all of the week's style, week style works and there's five of them. So if you'd like to know exactly um, which ones I did need a second skein for, please let me know. But I know for certain moss was used. You can see that there's a lot of green in the pattern and moss is like that um, mossy green, funnily enough. If we look at Nessie, it's the variegated green here. And it's used in a lot of them. Like you can see on there, like that one's pretty much all moss. This one has a lot. This one has a lot. Like it's used a fair bit. So, um, yeah, I'd recommend getting, definitely getting two skeins of moss. Um, if you're going to do it on a 16 or 32 count or bigger. And exactly charted, of course. So that was really exciting. Another finish. I um, So that is one, two, three, four this month. That's pretty cool. I don't usually get heaps of finishes every month because I've been working on whips that are larger. So that's really cool. Um, and then after I finished that, I decided to start um, one of the other smaller pieces that I had been eyeing off when I chose the Scotty Dog. Um, this one is part of my haul. Um, actually, there's a couple things on here that are part of my haul. And this was a gift, was part of my gift from Matt for our anniversary, which was earlier in December. We've been together for four years and he um, is very smart and he bought me some cross stitch patterns. Um, and it's definitely his style of things that he would like me to stitch, but I don't really care. He bought me cross stitch patterns, that's fine. Um, but this one he knew I would love and he was right. And it is called Snowy Dog. 
and it's by um, Valenti Cross Stitch and they're on Etsy. There's a few of these that he got me um, and I'll show you those in the haul section. And I love this pattern because it goes cross-eyed looking at that um, snowflake. I have been calling this derp dog or derpy dog because <laughs> um, it's hilarious. Now I have been stitching on this since Christmas Eve. So I've actually done two days worth of stitching because um, Christmas Day I didn't stitch, obviously, with the family. And yesterday I did stitch, but it wasn't heaps. Um, I mean, I got a lot done, but there wasn't a lot of time because I did some shopping and stuff. And I had to make a cheesecake. So that was... Um, oh, by the way, I made a Tim Tam cheesecake for Christmas Day. Oh my God, it was delicious. And I made another one for tonight, so... It's really cool. So if you are Australian or you can get your hands on Tim Tams, let me know and I'll send you the recipe. No baking, really easy. My first ever cheesecake I've made solo and I did it. So I was pretty happy. Anyway, <laughs> here's what I've done so far on Snowy Dog. So this is being stitched on a piece of 32 Cat Murano in, um, it's a sparkly fabric of the month. Um, so it doesn't actually have a name, but it is, it's like an icy blue. It's really pale. It's actually a pretty good color. Um, it's like a pale blue with white through it as well. And I had two options when I chose fabrics and Matt chose this one because it's blue and his favorite color is blue. So here's where we are. So I've completely stitched all of the normal cross stitches in his head and face. And I've started on the scarf just for reference. That's where we are. The ears get me every time. I think they're adorable. <laughs> and he obviously has his um, two different color eyes, which are gorgeous. And I love it. I think it's really cool. I'm planning to stitch on this until it's finished. I'm really hoping to get it done um, by tomorrow night because we're going away Sunday and I won't have time to stitch probably on Saturday much because we need to pack. And um, I, I will be taking stitching, but I'd rather take something that I'm not about to finish. This needle minder is a wolf. So I thought it was fitting. And it's from Needleminder Obsession on Etsy as well. So I'm really, really happy with this. I love it. And I can't wait to stitch on it more. And there's obviously lots of back stitch on it. So it's really going to shape his face and stuff when I get to it. Those are my whips. <clears throat> I might just um, rearrange a couple things. And we can get into the whole section of the video. All right, um, I will probably be stopping and starting throughout this because I've actually got a fair bit of haul. Um, nothing crazy, but there's enough here to talk about. <laughs> um, first is the fabric of the month for November from Sparklies. Um, I knew that this one was going to be a random one because she pre-warned us. And I got red berry sorbet. It's really pretty. Um, it is literally red berry sorbet. Um, it's in the 32 count Murano, as I always get. Beautiful. Um, for some reason, I wrote down that I'd got the silks for you for December, but I wouldn't have. They've probably only just been shipped or not even shipped yet. So um, that'll be next month. What else have I got? Okay, let's go through Matt's patterns that he bought me. They were all from Etsy sellers, I'm pretty sure. So let's start. So the first one was obviously the snowy dog I just showed you. Then this one is from Valenti as well and it's called London. I've discovered that Matt really likes um, like landscape stuff. Like he's not as much obviously into the cutesy stuff that I'm into. But he does really like this landscape type of thing. Every time he's picked out something it's been something like that. Um... That's really pretty. It is a full coverage. And apparently that's what he thinks I love to do. Which I do love to do. <laughs> Most of the ones he got me are either really big or full coverage. But that's totally fine. Bless him for trying. And he did a really, really, really good job. Um, another one from Valenti is the Rainbow Dog. Super cute. I've seen this a lot um, in all different types of dogs. And he knows I love dogs. So he knew what to do with that one. And the next one is this one and it doesn't have a name and I don't know where it's from. Um, he would probably know but he's at work so I can't ask him. But um, Castle Dragon, I think I might just call it Castle Dragon. 
it's pretty cool it's actually not very big at all which is nice i think it just might be a bit of confetti-ish kind of stuff the next one is big <laughs> and it's by valenti as well and it's a star wars pattern so this has a couple options i could do it black i could do it black on a really cool fabric i could do it black and white i could do it um on a white fabric with a variegated color i don't know i will have to decide but it does look really effective like this so it could be that i should have split these up it will um is this the next one yeah next one is another dragon and it's also from valenti and it's like a celtic -y cross one this is very much a matte choice that's not something i would pick out for myself sorry my screen server new computer um but he really liked it so i'll stitch that for him and i think that might be it for matt so he did do pretty well well done matthew <laughs> so um there that was my present for our anniversary which is really cool um then i went i was on the australian cross stitch stash on load which is dangerous and i'm trying to avoid it i'm even thinking of leaving the group because i keep looking at stuff um, and I found that somebody was selling a whole bunch of Mosel silks and a full hank of silks for you silk. So I've put all the Mosel ones in here. This is a little drawer to a set of drawer things I have in my stitching wardrobe. So I'll show you them as best I can. I think they were limited edition for like Thanksgiving or something because it has like the theme around it. Some of them are on bobbins and so I don't know which ones they are because they didn't have names. But they're, and they look a bit raggedy. I do apologize. I kind of just threw them in there. So that one, and a purple and a bluey white one. So the ones on bobbins. Now these skeins look a bit curly. <laughs> and I actually thought when I saw the package, oh my God, they're going to be all tangled and stuff. They were fine. So there's some doubles. If there's doubles, I'll just skip them. So Mayflower. That looks like hair that I would love. Wouldn't suit me though. Uh, Puritans. It's like a, it's more of a green at the bottom than a yellow. Green beans. Turkey. I love that one. It's gorgeous. Apple pie, another one that I adore. There's a couple of those. Yams. Very peachy color that one uh this one kaz person that's what it says on it but i don't know i don't know what that is but it's a cool black water leaf key lime pie pumpkin latte that one's cool it's orange i love orange uh Petal, I think. That's another double one. What's this one? Uh, North Port, and that's what it says. Mirabelle, beautiful purple into a blue. That's another one of those, another one of those. Oh, Mimosa. Forgot about this one. There's a couple of those, I think. Massachusetts. That's really pretty. Oops. Um, and the last two are Mayflower, which is a really beautiful dark blue into light blue and rainy day. So I was really happy with those. Good price for that many silks. Um, I will use them when I use them, but they're there. Nothing in mind for those. Um, and the hank of silk that I got from there as well same seller and i'm assuming this is the bag that it came in and it's got pr028 and it looks like this isn't that pretty so pink purple gray blue green it's gorgeous so i will keep that for a large pattern that needs the same Thread, I guess a monochrome type of thing 
So they're those things. And also from the Sash and Load site, I got a small pattern from Hands On Design. And you've probably seen this before, Seize the Day. And I'm probably gonna stitch this for my dad. I think he'd really like it. That one. That's his. Um, next was some needle minders. Now I've gone to putting my needle minders on this metallic board. It's meant to be used for holding in patterns, but they were they were on my trolley, but they were just going everywhere. So these are the ones that are currently not assigned to a project. So the newer ones I got, this was a free one um, from Needle Minder Obsession. Did I already show you that one? I can't remember. I got this witch. She's a clay one, so she's quite big. She's gorgeous. I'm not usually into the witches and stuff, but I saw a whole bunch of clay ones on there and that one was like, get me. So I got this one. Um, and it is really, really pretty. I really like that one. I got that with the wolf that I showed you before. This one was a free one from an order I did with Taryn. I got my mum a Taryn bag for Christmas and a whole bunch of other stuff in it. So that was there too. Was there anything else? I'm not in, my notes are so messy. I don't think there's any other ones on here that I haven't shown you already. I'm really happy to have them on here though. It kind of keeps it all together. It's nice. Um, you know how I got that gift card from a friend? I had some money left over, obviously, after buying the teacher pattern. So I got a couple of cross stitch patterns from Doreen Jones. I got two of them. This one's Mr. Fox. It's the cutest thing in the whole entire world. Um, and it's a nice size. It's 100 by 100. And this one was really random. I was just scrolling through Doreen Jones' page on Etsy. And um, I'm not into horoscopes, but when I saw this, Like, that's the cutest thing in the whole entire world. This is my one. I'm a Pisces. I'm a fish. It's really cute. <laughs> so I will eventually stitch this, one, stitch this one as well. I love it. Um, next, yesterday was Boxing Day. Um, if you're in Australia, you would have heard of Lincraft before. And they had a 50% off everything in the entire store sale. Except for like sewing machines and all lights. Um... I got a whole bunch of stuff for school because we're doing geography next year. I got like a globe and a few maps and stuff. Um, in terms of stitching, I bought some DMC um, because that was half price too, um, which is great for us. So that means it would have been about 63 cents or something like that, which is super cheap. Um, usually it's $1.30. Um, so I bought a few of those to start um, getting my master set going. Um, I still need a whole bunch more. But um, it was a nice little start. And I'll just keep buying them when I need to fill in postage or um, when there's a sale on. I did also get a kit from Dimensions. Um, this is something that um, I've been seeing. Every time we go there, I see it. And Matt and I look at it. And I can never justify the price. Because <laughs> it's so expensive. Because it was half price. It was $40, which is really cheap um, for a Dimensions kit here. A gold collection Dimensions kit. And it's the Aurora Cabin. Um, this is very, sorry, this is so glary, but that's going to have to do. This is very much a matte inspired one. This is really bad. It's so, it's, <laughs> let's go there. You can see that. Um, you can see me down here. That's really funny. Um, he does snowboarding. He loves the snow. Um, and I think this is gorgeous. All those colors are beautiful. It's obviously a kit, so it comes with everything. Um, I really, 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 really like this. And I was really excited to see that that was also half price. Because a lot of the time when stores have half price sales, it's like everything but cross stitch for some reason. This was $40. Really happy with that. Next, I'm going to show you, um, what should I do next? I might show you what my grandmother um, has passed on to me, as she does. Um, Granny's been going through a bit of a phase. And we all know Granny was the one who taught mum how to stitch and taught me how to stitch and mum helped teach me how to stitch too so she's a big reason why I have so much that I do and that I do um I don't mean have so much that doesn't make sense that um I know how to stitch and that I have this hobby and she really encourages it um but she's getting to the point where she doesn't want to do really big pieces anymore um so she's starting to de de stash um and so she pulled out three boxes of patterns <laughs> whether they be kits that she's never done or patterns that she has done or just charts that she doesn't want anymore um 
And she said, go through it, get what you want. Just show, I had to show her first just to make sure she didn't want it anymore. Um, and also she pulled out a whole bunch of linen for me because she can't really see it well. So I'm going to show you that stuff and then I'm going to talk to you a little bit about something else that she gave me too. So the first thing I wasn't going to take, but I really like it and I don't know if I'll use it or if I will try and sell it, but it's a, um, it comes from Austria apparently. She has no idea where she got it from. She can't remember. But it's a pillow case. This is separate. So it's a pillow case. And then this is a like a mat thing that you just stitch on. It's just like 14 count. It's really pretty though. So I don't really know what to do with it or if I will. But I'm going to hang on to it for a bit just in case I find something that's perfect for it. Um, but yeah, she can't tell me where she got it from. Um... I'm sure she just probably just picked it up or was given it in a big stash of things and just never looked at it. But she didn't want it. I was like, okay. Sorry for the um, noises, but there's going to be a little bit of that during this point of the video. Um, some linen. It looks a bit like an antique white or a cream color. Probably 36 can or 32. I can't really tell. None of them have the cans on them, so I have to measure them. Um, in here we have a whole bunch of Ada. It's the stuff that she can't see anymore is 18 count. So she's given me that. It's really stiff. <laughs> so I might dye it and try and loosen it up a bit. I don't know. Um, and this was some linen as well. So some like brownie color, natural, some blue. And this is even weave in a, like a blush pink color. It's really nice. I had another bit, but I can't seem to... Oh, there's some more under here. That'll be where it is. Maybe not. That's a whole bunch of Ada as well. 18 count for everything in there. I had another bit of Ada, but maybe I dropped it or it's in a box. It was a really... Not Ada. Linen. Really long piece of linen in a... Like fully natural. It's beautiful. And I'm going to... I have an idea for it. So if I find it, I'll talk to you about it. This was a random book. <laughs> And it's, I think it's from the 70s. It's from the Embroiders Guild. It has a name on it. But it's got a whole bunch of things in like this. Stuff like that. So they're just little, that's a very Christmassy one actually. Little things that I can stitch with. Um, there's alphabets too. I didn't see that. What? Stuff like this. Can do that with a silk or something so just like um yeah there's alphabets and stuff stuff that would be good with monochrome colors lots in there so granny said don't leave that with me you take it here are some patterns as well this one i kind of um denied about i really like it it's a full kit it's got linen um it's by eva rosenstand no that's what it's called I think it's by Clara Weaver. Weaver? I'm not sure. Um, but it's really pretty. And it comes with everything. It's on linen. It's just massive. But I really do like that one. Um, Granny Stitches for Fauna could not say no. It is the Otters. Oh, I just saw the pattern. It's hand drawn. Oh, that's going to kill me. But anyway, Otters are gorgeous. Um, got this one. It's a Celtic Cross. Looks like that. That's a maybe. Not sure about that one. And a prairie schooler. A prairie garden too. Thought that was really pretty. And yes, it is an original one. I might convert that one. So, super cute. Hang on one second. I'm just going to move some stuff around. And then we'll get to the next bit. So the other thing that Granny gave me. Oh, there's that linen. <laughs> there it is. It's a really long skinny piece and I want to stitch the um, Less Said More series by Lizzie Kate on it. So that's what that's going to go to. Um, this box is full of patterns and charts and kits that Granny didn't want, I didn't want and Mum didn't want. And um, there's like, how do you say it? Thea Governor or Thea Governor or something? 
there's a whole bunch of those in there there's a lot of stuff in here that i'm going to actually try and sell um on probably on stash on load i would assume so that's probably going to go up um probably i'd say in the new year um just because if i do it now i'm going to be away for a week and i won't be able to do anything so i'll probably do it when we get back um whatever i have left of course i will give away um Granny asked if I could try and sell it first. Um, and she's like, but yeah, of course, give it away if needed. So I will do that if there's any left. Um, there's nothing wrong with them. <laughs> it's just not my style of stuff. You know what I mean? Like it's, yeah, someone will like it. Hopefully some of you. So uh, I'll put that on there and um, see how we go with that. The last part of haul, finally, is um my christmas presents from my mother and my dad they um i sent mum my wish list from one two three and said because she was originally going to give me money towards my shadow and i decided that i didn't want that now um just because of how much stuff i have and it's really big i hopefully will eventually get there um but i'm not like losing sleep over it so um and i said just you know what budget you have <laughs> i don't know so here's my wish list pick things that you like and you think i'd like to stitch to so she did that one of the things she got me though that wasn't on my wish list is one of these bad boys boom boom i haven't put batteries in it yet but this is going to be great for um stitching at our little weekend away that we do every year and when i need to stitch without a good light so that's fantastic love it um so on one two three she actually got me a pattern that wasn't on my wishes that she just liked and I had a feeling she would do it I don't know why um but it's by Sara Germani um, I'm assuming it's Italian it just says copyright Sara so um favole I'm not sure but it's a whole bunch of fairy tales and it is really cute so I was happy with that um she also got me something really cool Mm, I love castles in the air so much and when she got it I died <laughs> I opened the package and I saw this I was like oh and then I opened other things and I cried when I saw it I didn't realize it was like only nine pages I thought it was a lot bigger but it makes sense three rows of three um and she actually also got me one other pattern home of a needlework two and she kitted it up for me so she just got what you know how one two three has it on the side so some linen it's 28 count antique ivory cashel linen which looks pretty darn good to me and it's a lot more than i need for the pattern so i'll have some left over and i also got the classic color works for it which is really nice so this is my favorite razzleberry branded pears hickory sticks bamboo or just you know white old blue weeping willow and cocoa bean so all the colors i need for it so i can start that at any point which was so lovely and she just kept like handing me presents i was like it's too much and then she handed me this present so it's all the new colors the 35 new colors which I was not expecting. Apparently this came on Christmas Eve. <laughs> the stuff from America came sooner than that stuff. So that was pretty crazy. So that is haul. I know it was a lot. Um, sometimes it's like that. Sometimes it's not. So that's okay. I'm going to actually move to giveaway first. And then I will. I'm probably just going to do it all in one video. Do my wrap up. And also my plans for next year. Okay. Let's move on to the giveaway. Um, if you don't know. I am giving away at least three things at the moment each of my videos um i was giving away my magazine patterns and they're pretty much gone so now i'm giving away my geeky stitching co patterns and also a whole bunch of stuff that deb sent me deb is a lovely 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 viewer and subscriber and supporter and amazing person overall and she sent me a whole bunch of magazines and also some kits and patterns to give away so i'm giving those away and i'll tell you how to enter when i show you the ones for this video so last month we had these two they were going together 
and Seaweed Otter. You won these. Best name ever. Please let me know what your first name is. <laughs> um, if you could just send me a message on Instagram or send me an email, which will be in the description um, with your address, and they'll be sent out to you. And um, the Geeky Stitching Co. pattern was You Light Me Up, or the trees. And the person who won this was Dala B. So, Dala, I think I have your address. I will check. If I don't, I'll probably send you a message um, and get that to you. And the last one was Hannah. And this was a Heritage Crafts John Clayton design. And the person that won this was Stitching is My Happy Place, Marie. Now, Marie, I haven't sent you your other one that you won, so I'm just going to put this in all together. So if you have won a pattern over the last few months, I do apologize for not sending them out yet. Um, as you can imagine, end of the year, it's a bit crazy. So I will send them. And with work, the post office closes by the time I get home. So it's like one hour a week maybe that I'll be able to get there. And if I'm busy, I can't. So because I'm on holidays, I'll be able to send them all off. I'm thinking what I'll either do is I'll either send them off Friday or Saturday morning or in the first week of January or the second week of January when I get back from my holiday. So um, they will come to you. Don't worry. <laughs> so if you would like to enter the giveaway at any time um, for the patterns that I show today, you need to be over 18 or have some parents permission to enter. You can't say giveaway in the comments because I will delete it or free or anything like that. Um, Sometimes I give away patterns that are out of a magazine. So if you're not a fan of that, please don't enter. And if you don't want your patterns to be folded, if they're paper ones, please don't enter either because I do fold them. It is so much cheaper on postage <laughs> and I am doing this completely free charge. So I want to do it as economically as I can. So I've got four to give away. And the first one I'm going to show you that you've already seen. Unfortunately, the person who won this um, didn't give me their information. So I'm going to give it away again. I tried for, I think it's been eight weeks since they won and I haven't received anything. So I try and give you as much time as you can to catch up on Floss Tube. So eight weeks is probably enough. Um, and it is Happily Ever After. It's from Cross Stitch Crazy, April 2016, and it's a wedding sampler. So if you would like to stitch this, please say in, the, in your comment below, I would like to stitch the sampler. And I will enter you in for that one. The next one is a Deb kit. And I've got two Deb patterns today. The first one is I Love Meerkats. And it's by Heritage Crafts. If you would like to sit to this little cute, cute little baby, just say, I would like to sit to the meerkat. And you'll be entered for that one. And by the way, you can enter in as many as you want. I don't really care. The other Deb pattern is from the Margaret Sherry collection from Heritage Stitch Craft. And it's Pursuit. It's a gorgeous little cat. This is just the chart. Such a fluffy cat. Lovely. And the final one is the Geeky Stitching Co. for this month. And it is a mini pattern. And it's donuts, drinking wine and having a party. Pretty awesome. If you'd like to stitch this one, just say I would like to stitch the donuts. And that obviously comes with the colour list as well. And I'll send that out to you. That's the giveaway done. Amazing. Radio. So I actually don't know how long I've been filming because every time I've stopped, I haven't actually stopped the video. I've just been continuing on. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do my wrap up and my plans all in the same video. I just think it will be easier and easier for you to catch up on Floss Tube. <laughs> so I'm going to pack up here, put everything away, and then I'm going to bring out the stuff that I wanted to show you in my wrap up video and my plans video. And we'll get started on that. Boom, we're back. Let's go with the um, wrap up first. This probably won't take very long. Um, and then we'll talk about plans, which might take a little bit longer. So the wrap up, I'm just going to go over where I was at the start of the year, where I am now and a couple of thoughts and things. Um, I started this year with 12 whips. I had um, some whips that have been hanging around for a while. So they were in there. Um, I now have 10 whips. So I'm down to my goal overall was to get to 10 whips in the back of my mind. I wanted 10 and under. So 10 was fine. Oh my God, this video will not stop getting interrupted. 
Um, I just got a phone call from my sister and for some reason when I get phone calls, Sky goes off her face and needs to go outside. So now she's outside and she wants to come back in, but she's not. Um, I don't actually remember where I was up to. I think I was saying that I wanted to have 10 or less whips um, and I'm at 10. So that's really exciting. Um, I had some particular goals at the start of the year. I wanted to finish six pages on Epic Pokemon. I wanted to finish the two cells that I was doing and there was I think four other whips that I wanted to finish and I did actually meet all those goals which was fantastic plus I did other stuff um so I'm going to tell you starts and finishes and a few other things so I actually had 12 starts this year which I didn't think there was that many um but there was so I started um the two cells that I was doing I started my birthday start which was a stitch of day keeps reality away which I'll show you in a minute um, I started Enchanted Mermaid by Mirabilia for um, Belinda's birthday in June, I'm pretty sure it was. Um, it hasn't got much work on it. It's not a focus, but I did start it. Um, I started Kings and Queens of the UK, and that's been my monthly project. I On New Year's Day, I started Rapunzel by Hayde. It's a Hayde piece. It's beautiful. Again, haven't really worked on it much this year. Um, I started a little design I've been calling no I've been calling sleepy cat um which I've made for my grandma's birthday I started the siach along I started the scotty dog which I showed you before I started the teacher piece which I showed you before I started snowy dog which I showed you before and the medieval castle cell so a few finishes in there which was good I had 26 starts in 2017 so I feel like it was a bit better <laughs> 12 instead of 26 Let's talk finishes. I will show you them if I have them. Otherwise, I'll show you photos. Um, I don't think I'll get stuff down off the walls. I don't think I actually have much on the walls except for this one. So I'll probably just show you it. Um, okay, my finishes are on a hanger. And the first one is conveniently here. This isn't in the order I did it. It's more alphabetical, if anything. This was my birthday start. A stitch away. A stitch a day keeps reality away. Um... I probably won't go through the fabric and stuff because I don't really remember, but you can look back on old videos. This was stitched in all silks for you. Um, one that I'll have to insert a picture of is Always and Forever by Stitch Rovia. This was a piece I did for my parents' wedding anniversary in June. I finished it very early in the year and had it framed and was sitting in my wardrobe until June. And it's currently sitting in their house on the wall. Um, the next piece I finished was a very recent one. And this is autumn and it's a panel piece that I'm going to get framed and um, I stitched this from Cross Stitch Crazy magazine. The next one was the class schedule cell or next in order of alphabetical was the class schedule cell by Armada Designs. Finished that a few months ago. She released these three at the same time so I got it finished early. I made changes to this and they're outlined in old videos so you can have a look. But the biggest one is that I was putting the professor's names in all of them. Um, the next one I also don't have, I'll put in a picture of it. It is the um, Elephant Birth Sampler by Stitch Rovia. I stitched this for my niece or Matt's niece, I call her my niece, um, who was born at the end of May. So I gave that to her parents. Um, Next was Poppies in the Wind. This is a piece that I started last year and I finished this year and I donated to um, an organisation called RSL. It's for return veterans and my dad has is a life member of the place that I donated to. So I'll put in a picture here of that. Next one is Sleeping Cat. Um, this was for my grandma, like I said, so I'll pop in a picture here. This was from um, Cross Stitch Crazy as well. This camera was doing weird things just then. I hope it's okay. Um, next was the Stiotch along. I mean, you've just seen it, but while I've got it, I'm going to show you it again. <laughs> um, so that was another one that I finished this year, obviously. Um, I've just talked about that, so I don't really need to say what I did before. Next one on this thing is Turtle Duck Family. This was by a designer on Etsy. It is from Avatar The Last Airbender. That, oh, sorry, you can see the back of my work there. 
um, that universe. It was from Matt from for our anniversary the year before, in 2017. So I wanted to get it done before our anniversary this year, and I did. Still haven't framed it, though. <laughs> I mean, I haven't framed this, and I finished this in, like, February or March. Um, next is Walking in London. I'm just going to move you up slightly. That's that one. That's by Clouds Factory. Um, framed it in a really cool frame. It really suits this area here. So I'm really happy with that. Next is the teacher piece, which I showed you before, but I'll pop in a picture again. Then the Scotty Dog by Mill Hill. This is the other one, another one. And of course this one that I just showed you, but I'm going to do it again. Legendary Creatures Cell. All donezo. I don't think that will be my last finish for the year. I think I'll finish Scotty Dog, uh, Snowy Dog before then, but it's not finished in time for this. So <laughs> I have to kind of get it out of the way and say it now. So that's my 13 finishes. Last year I had 17. Um, I know that last year I had a lot of smaller finishes. So a lot of those pieces were ones that I really wanted to get done. Now the ones that I had um, listed as focus pieces were Always and Forever, um, Class Schedule Cell, Elephant Birth Sampler, Poppies in the Wind, Turtle Rock Family, Walking in London, and Legendary Creatures, and they all got finished. Um, like I said before, I got six full coverage pages finished and they were all on Pokemon, which is just there. Um, that's one more than last year. Last year I got five done. So I think I'll just aim for that, but I'll talk about that in a minute. I don't, I don't have any UFOs. Um, I haven't, as in, I haven't UFO'd anything this year. In terms of overall this year, it was pretty focused. Um, I think you would, you would have noticed that I did a lot of goal setting and I went to I tried to get things done um, particularly whips that had, I really like this one and stuff that had just been going along but not quick enough and I wanted to get them finished um, biggest aim was to get my whip count down um, for so, crazy thing happened <laughs> um, in the first part of the year because of the cells that I'd started and stuff I ended up at 17 whips and I didn't like that so I've actually brought it down quite a lot um, so I'm going to try and stick to the 10 mark, but aiming for lower. I don't want to go over 10 and I don't think I will. Um, as much as it was focus, it was also all over the, all over the place. And I've said down here, it was mental state driven. So when I, um, got into, um, particular mental states, like I was, um, anxious about something or a bit sad about something and stuff, my stitching drops off really heavily. Um, when I'm thinking about work and doing work stuff, that drops off as well. So it kind of just depends on what mood I'm in. I mean, I'm sure a lot of you can relate. A lot of people say they can't go a day without stitching, but I think if I did that, I would, if I didn't have days without stitching, I think I would go kind of insane. Um, because I like having, sometimes I just want to sit down and just watch TV or watch Matt play a game or something like that. I don't want to be doing anything. So that's just me. Um, so yeah, I think that, um, that kind of covers how I stitch. So let's talk next year. Now you've heard me say a couple times that I've had some revelations um, about my stitching and stuff. So as you noticed, I started a couple of small things and I was thinking about this as I was starting those and I've decided that I'm going to have goal focused progress next year rather than days usually I would do a week week blocks in a rotation but instead I'm going to focus on goals so what I'm going to do is at the start of each month I will still do my king or queen that's not going to change so that will kind of cut into whatever I'm doing so if I'm in the middle of doing a goal I'll do the king or queen and then I'll just keep going um I just realized what the time was been over an hour <laughs> um so i'm gonna have some focus whips and they're gonna go in, gonna go in little lots until they're finished epic pokemon will always be a focus whip that will always stay there um but as things get finished i'll obviously need to move on and i'm going to show you what those 
whips are now. This is my little whip box that I have them all in. And it's falling to pieces. No, it's not. Okay, so obviously Epic Pokemon, there's four four every time. Um, medieval cell. I showed you that before, I don't need to get that out again. Um, but that's going to be, the goal for that one is one page. That is either one page of border or one page or one part. Let's get yeah, rephrase that. So either one page of border or one part. So for example, the first part, the second part, sorry, was the door and the dragon. So that would be one goal together rather than doing the door and then something else and then the dragon and something else. Um, Epic Pokemon's goal, I had it listed as five days, but I'm going to change it to 1500 stitches because that's a quarter of a page. Um, if I get to 1500 stitches, like really, really quickly, like if I'm on holidays or something and I feel like continuing, I will. Um, but if it's like a bit of a drag, then I'll stop at 1500. My next focus whip is Renaissance Mermaid by Mirabilia. And this is the one that I'm focusing on out of this one, an Enchanted Mermaid. It's when I first started. It's on a piece of 32 Camp Joblon and Oasis by Color Cascade Fabrics. Everything you can see has been backstitched and stitched. Beads will be at the end. Um, now, I struggle to think of a goal for this one. I still am. I kind of said a section at a time, so maybe part of a tail or some hair or something. I'm not really sure. I'm going to have to figure that out as I go, I think. Um, I could do it in days or amount of stitches, but I think I'll just figure it out as I go. So that's the third one. And the fourth one is an old cell that I've had going since actually close to when it finished. It's the Lakeside Needlecraft Fantasy Cell. And this is on a piece of 32 count Joblin in Forbidden Fruit by Color Cascade Fabrics. Here's where that one is. So yeah, this is one that's close to finish as well. Um, goal for this one is a page. So whether that be a page of border or a character, which are up here. What I want to do is do this page of border, this page of border, and I think the next one, because I want to get to the point where I can do border, character, border, character, and then it, then it will be finished. So it'll just depend on what I get to. But this one is interesting. I actually really like doing it. I know a lot of people don't. A lot of people think it's really crowded and I totally get where you're coming from. I really like the border. I know a lot of people don't, but I really like it. I like the characters. I don't know if that's because I didn't do it as it was coming out. I signed up when it had like three months to go. So I'm not sure, but I really do like it. I just don't know... Yeah, it just hasn't like popped up in a focus, but now will. So they're the four focus whips um, to begin with. I keep saying to begin with. What I mean is that um, if things get finished, I'm, I'm still tossing it up, but I what I'm thinking I'm going to do is instead of replacing that whip with something else, I'll just have less. I've got a little wheel that I'm going to spin for them um, to choose which one I'm going to work on. So if, for example, I got the fantasy cell finished, I wouldn't replace it with another older whip. I think I would just um, leave it until all of them are finished, except obviously Epic Pokemon, and then I would choose three new ones. And I do have three, I think, other ones that I could put in. I've got a, a soda stitch and a stitch rovia piece and a couple and uh, one other one, I think. I think it's the Enchanted Mermaid I could put in as well. Um, but yeah, I think I just want to focus on those four to start with. Um, the other pieces that I would focus on are ones that I would do just like a page on. Okay. Now, once I've finished a goal on a whip, I'm going to have a new start. Um, don't freak out. Because <laughs> I know when people say that, I get a little bit like, oh my God, you're going to have so many new starts and so many whips. And you're talking about keeping them under 10. And what are you talking about? What I've decided is I'm going to start. I've got a folder of all of my pieces of stash that are 100, and 100, 100 by 100 stitches or less. So that's all my small stuff. And I'm going to show you what those are now. I'll just tell you a bit about the goal. So I'm going to 
work on the small start. I'll either work on it until it's completely finished because they're small. I'd be happy to do that or until I need a break. And I need to be really mindful of when I need a break on something because otherwise I'll just won't stitch. So let's say, for example, you've just saw this one. Seize the day. This is a small one. Um, if I was to stitch on this until it's done, that's great. But if I stitched like half and I was like, mm, I think I need to switch to something else, I would then spin the wheel, do a goal on a whip, and then come back to it until it's finished. If I need a break on it and I spin the wheel, do a goal on a whip, I'm not going to start another new small because this one's not finished yet. Does that make sense? So I'm going to be starting things, but I'm also going to be finishing them before I start something else. I hope that makes sense. I have a lot of small things to show and I have a lot of small things to do. So I wanted to get through those. Um, I'm not expecting to get them all finished, obviously, um, but a few would be nice. So this is one. The fox is another one. And so is the castle dragon that I've shown you just before. So they're going to be on the list. And the way I'm going to choose them is by spinning a wheel with them all in them. Because there's so many, it would be really hard for me to choose. So I'm just going to let the wheel do it and I'll just go with it. Um, so this is the folder. Those haven't made it to the folder yet. So this is all my um, small patterns in here. So we're just going to go through them, I guess. I don't really know how else to do it. So Mill Hill Kit, Spring Bouquet, Triple Scoop. It's a nice little small one. I don't think that's going to take me oh i'm not going to say it's not going to take me as long because it's a bit complicated <laughs> um this one's a little one it's a highland cow it's tiny there is thread in here but i think i'll need some more that's one from granny this one is a lizzie kate snippet love my dog i'm going to change it i was going to stitch this twice but i don't think i can be bothered so i'm going to change this to be maybe taller or just the font smaller and put evie and sky on there my two dogs that one's Evie um so that I don't have to stitch this twice <laughs> um another Mill Hill kit this is I've only got two at the moment this is from the autumn harvest and it's berry jam really cute I love this one that was the first one I bought uh this one is a bit of a collection now this one has a little bit of a asterisk next to it as does another set this is the frosty forest series so I have the title, Frosty Forest. We've got Snowy Friends. Raccoon Cabin. Snowman's Cottage. Snowy Deer. And that's what I have so far. I'm going to sit to this all in one piece. Um, I'm going to put these individually into my wheel. If it selects one, I will, even if it selects this one, I will start with this one in the center and then go around. Um, oh, I've just dropped them all. Um, but yeah, that will be the first one I do. So I'm not sure if I'll buy the, the fabric or if I'll get a piece that I already have. Um, I feel like I've got some fabric that would suit anyway. So yeah, um, I know there's buttons in them, isn't there? But I probably won't get the buttons I'm not sure I might be able to find some at one of my local stores so that's the frosty forest series so they'll like I said all individually but um if it chooses one that's not the title I'll switch to the title first and then I'll figure out how I want to arrange them another one that's similar to that is the oh there's another frost oh no it's not it's a different pattern it's the Lizzie Kate series that I've got the less is more or less equals more or something like that. Um, let's get these in order. So the first one is fear less, hope more. Wine less, breathe more. Talk less, say more. And hate less, love more. I'm going to put these all in. Um, but they, there is a particular order they go in um, for the border. I think there's an example in here. Yeah, I'm going to do it that way on that big piece of fabric. So um, I'm going to do it in the order that they've got here. So whatever one comes up, I'll just choose the next one that I'm up to. If they come up at all, who knows? Little Christmas piece that Adele gave me last year. Gingerbread House 2. I have no desire to do the whole set of this in one big thing. So I'm really excited. I only have one. 
Um, Lizzie Kate, a little stitch that's got fabric with it. I would just need to kit it up. Next one is Michael Power bookmarks. It's the strawberry ice one. Couple left. I could grab them. It'd be great. This is a Maria pattern. Cute patterns by Maria or cute designs by Maria. I can never remember on Etsy. It's well in a light bulb. This is technically more than a hundred by hundred, but that's because of this. And I'm not counting that as heaps of stitching. So I don't really care. So that's in the list. Um, four in the bush. Ink circles. It's a freebie. That's on there as well. Uh, this heart of mine by ink circles. That's 102, so it's just over, but I think that's okay. Uh, Whispered by the Wind Bound Hearts. And then I've got these magazine patterns. So we've got the Geo Animals. I don't think there's the, no, there's not the full line, but there's a line here, Fox and a Wolf. I think they are all... Yep, they're all under 100 by 100. This one's the biggest, and it's underneath, under that, but it is a fair bit of stitching. So there's those, and then there's the sleeping animals. Now, I stitched, as you know, this one. I'm not going to stitch it again. I'm not a huge fan of cats. I do love cats. They're adorable, but I don't want one. Um, so I'll stitch these three. So they'll be in separately, so whatever one comes up, I'll just do it. I think what I'm also going to do is put in Home of a Needleworker. It is a little bit bigger, but because mum gave it to me, she kind of wants me to stitch it. And so I'm like, I might put that in the wheel as well. So that's what I'm going to do for those. So the way you'll kind of see me working is that I will, depending on what I'm up to. So after Sadawi Dog is finished, for example, I'm going to spin my whip focus wheel. Whatever comes up, I'm going to work on, on that and complete the goal that I've just told you about. After that, I'll then spin my start wheel for my smalls and pick one. What I think I'm actually going to do is when I'm getting towards the end of that goal, I'm going to spin the start wheel and get it all kitted up. Some of this stuff, a lot of the stuff actually is not kitted up. I don't have fabric for every single thing that I have. It's just not what I do. I just kind of do it as I go. I have a lot of fabric to choose from. I've got lots of silks and specialty threads that I can choose if I want to, um, or just a bunch of DMC, like whatever. So I think I'm going to do that in case, for example, um, a Lizzie Kate comes up that has weak style works or something and I can swap it into a silks for you. I need to have some time to do that. So I'll do that. That's kind of how it's going to go. I hope that makes sense. Um, I think it's really good for me to do whip focus stuff as well as some starts and finishes. I'm definitely a finish stitcher, I think, except for obviously this one. I love seeing the progress on that. I think I really, really like finishing stuff. Um, for things like the long dog sampler, the castles in the air one, that one would be a progress one too because the picture kind of comes together like that. But the little small ones, I really do like getting them finished. So I'm really, really looking forward to it. I don't, I remember throughout this whole year before I went to sleep, it's really weird, but I would think about what I'm stitching next year and I was always thinking, yep, I'm going to get these whips done. I'm going to get down to like four projects. Um, and I just don't think like that anymore. I think about, I get really excited for what I can, what I'm about to do. Um, oh, what I did want to say was if the wheel spins something that to start and I'm not like super, not that I don't like it. I love every single pattern I have, but if I'm not in the mood for like ending circles and I'd rather do a Lizzie Kate or something, I'll just spin it again. Like I'm not, I'm going to make myself stitch if that makes sense. Same with the um, focus whips. If I spin one and I'm really, really loving it and I don't want to stop like Renaissance Mermaid or something, I'll just keep going. It's still stitching. It's still going to have to get done at some point. So no worries there. Um, so that's my plans. I'm really looking forward to it. In terms of buying stuff, um, aiming to not. <laughs> I got given an Etsy voucher by my sister for Christmas and I was going to find some patterns. And I was kind of like making myself like stuff. And Mac goes, do you, do you actually need any more? Like he says that all the time. And I was like, no, I don't. I have a lot. Um, so I bought some earrings instead. And I'll show you them when they come in because they're like fandom themed. So I'm going to try not to buy much and instead save towards redoing our house. Like a lot of the stuff in our house needs a, just an update. So 
I would rather put the money towards that. And um, in terms of fabric of the month and silks of the month clubs, I'm probably going to start stopping those. Um, I have a lot of stuff. I have a lot of, especially fabric. I can definitely stop the fabric one. I have a lot of fabric. And if I need anything special, I can always just order it. But yeah, that little basket I have is getting overflowing. <laughs> silks. I have a lot of silks. Um, I would like to up my collection of like over dyed but I need to save money as well so we'll see I'm really looking forward to next year I really can't wait to see all of your videos for next year and your wrap ups and stuff that's my favorite time of the year in floss tube I love plans I love hearing about your plans it makes me really excited so um thank you for sticking through this mess of a video I hope with editing it makes sense because at the moment it's all over the place <laughs> so I'm going to sit here for the next have along and edit um, and sort out my house. I need to do some washing, I need to do some cleaning, but I'll get there. It's no big deal. Um, like I said, thanks so much for watching. I hope it made sense. I hope you can stick with me through all my plan changes. I don't think this plan will change, but I think that a lot of the time and then it does, but it just feels really good. So hopefully we're all good. Thanks again for sticking by me and um, I look forward to spending 2019 with you. Bye everyone.